The Geho Auxiliaries The Geho Auxiliaries in Power N consists of the Power N lube oil pump, the propelling liquid pump, the Geho air compressors, and the Geho strainers. The Power N lube oil pump, or M2, is the pump used for one of the lubrication methods used in the Power N. These two lubrication methods are the splash lubrication system and the pump driven force feed lubrication system. The splash lubrication system used on the crankshaft bearings is brought into effect by the rotation of the crankshaft in the oil sump. This causes the oil level fluctuation observed in the level gauge. The oil at the splashed oil sump just circulates, and a subsequent abnormal increase or decrease of oil level means contamination or leakage and should be reported immediately. The force feed lubrication system, on the other hand, utilizes the lube oil pump or M2 pump which lubricates oil under pressure on areas such as the drive shaft and the crankshaft bearings, the upper and lower side of the crosshead liners, and the crosshead bearings which are not sufficiently lubricated by the splashed oil system. The propelling liquid pump or piston flushing unit, also called as M6 pump, supplies the circulating oil to the diaphragm, piston, and the cylinder. If propelling liquid needs to be supplied to the propelling liquid section, then the flow to the flushing unit will be switched off and will be used for the propelling liquid unit. The pump takes the propelling liquid from the propelling liquid tank and supplies the propelling liquid when ZSL is triggered. During normal operation, the diaphragm should be moving at optimal position in between ZSL and ZSH, thus the flushing unit is active. It should be noted, however, that the programmable logic controller does not allow the absence of propelling liquid in the flushing unit exceeding more than one minute. The Geho Air Compressors The Geho Air Compressors 102-202-CP01 Alpha Bravo provides the high-pressure air for filling into the suction and discharge air vessel. High-pressure air is stored in vessels, and the pressure is maintained at 300 bars with the two compressors that are installed in combination operation, that is, with one unit functioning as the master and one unit as slave. The air is supplied to suction and discharge air vessels via the level control valves. The compressor pressure should be constantly monitored and made sure that it is building up and high enough to prevent backflow of slurry into the air pipes and maintain optimal condition of the Geho air vessels. An abnormal trend in pressure should be reported immediately. The Geho strainers and filters. The Geho strainers and filters are installed in the suction and discharge of the M2 and M6 pump and the Geho suction line. M2 and M6 filter housings are equipped with a visual clogging indicator. Under normal operation, the indicator will show a green display. If the indicator displays red, then the oil filter resistance is too high and needs to be replaced immediately. The M6 suction filters, on the other hand, is equipped with a visual analog scale clogging indicator. During stoppage of the oil pump, the pressure shall indicate zero bar. Under normal operating conditions, between 0 and negative 0.7 bar, while negative 0.7 to negative 1 bar means clogging, and the filter element should be replaced. The strainer and the geo suction line is fitted in order to stop large debris, such as brick and scale, from damaging the pump and the valves. Geho Priming To prepare the geho pump system for operation and for a free trouble startup, it is absolutely important to prime the pump. Priming is done if and only if the pump has been standby for a greater than or equal to 72 hours. The Geho pump priming has the following steps. Priming the slurry section, priming the propelling liquid section, and the pump manual cranking. Priming the slurry section. Priming the slurry section is done for the deaeration of the slurry section. This is achieved by means of filling water via water connection at the suction line and draining the water back out through the valve and the discharge line. Water filling also removes air from the propelling liquid chamber and enables the diaphragm to move into its starting position. This is achieved by partially closing the drain valve at the discharge line in order to achieve sufficient liquid pressure that is high enough to overcome the force required for the propelling liquid to flow through non-return valves. 
This flushing water pressure will force the Gehl pump diaphragm to move back until the filling initiator ZSL is activated, which is its priming start position. Priming the propelling liquid section. Priming the propelling liquid section is for the deaeration of the propelling liquid section. The vent valves in the propelling liquid section of the diaphragms and the vent valve in the common line of safety relief valve must be open for deaeration. Since the ZSL for the diaphragms are activated, the filling starts as soon as the propelling liquid pump is switched on and the main supply valve is opened by pushing the main 15 minute supply valve button in the Geho pump panel. As propelling liquid is being filled, air pockets shall gradually escape at the vent lines. Close the vent valve if there are no more air bubbles observed at the vent line and if the monitoring rod of the respective diaphragm deactivate the ZSL indicators. If necessary, repeat the opening of 15 minute supply valve until all ZSL lights of all diaphragms are off. This indicates that the diaphragms have left its starting position. Pump manual cranking. In the priming of propelling liquid section, the chambers were filled with propelling liquid just enough that it has left the ZSL position. Therefore, all of the diaphragms are expected to be in similar position. However, since the pistons are positioned differently as it follows each other at 120 degree crankshaft angle, it is also expected that the chambers are still not yet properly filled with propelling liquid and correspondingly, the diaphragms are not positioned with respect to its piston position. Manual cranking of the pump will enable complete filling of the propelling liquid chamber and positioning the diaphragms properly in relation to the piston. First, it should be confirmed that the lubrication pump is running and delivers good oil quantity. Afterwards, rotation of the pump crankshaft manually shall proceed. If one of the lights ZSH or ZSL of the diaphragm is lit, the rotation of the pump must be stopped so that the propelling liquid system will be able to drain or fill propelling liquid until the switch light is off. Wait until the indicator light is off and continue the manual cranking until no switch lights light up during rotation of the pump. This indicates that all chambers are filled properly with propelling liquid and the monitoring rod indicator is moving properly between the switch ZSL and ZSH, thus reaching the correct position of the diaphragm in relation to the piston position.